This week in Nerf, we've got a new dual wieldable blaster, a new Overwatch blaster, and the return of Toys R Us. I'm Jangular, and every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. Pacific, this is your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. Before we get on into it today, I do just want to let you know that next weekend is Ragnar Oktoberfest, and as it is here in San Jose, I will be a bit busy, most likely prepping and getting things ready for all the excitement of the weekend. Because of that, I am going to try to do a somewhat different, more laid back episode, potentially with some other people, uh, somewhat along the lines of what I did during End War, so that I have the time to film and post, but don't need to dedicate the hours to edit and all of that as much for it. So look out for that. Just want to let you know that if things are really crazy, there may not be an episode, but I'm going to try my best to get one out to you. With that said, let's get right on into it. Let's start with that Toys R Us news. Now, Way back uh, late last year into early this year, Toys R Us was going through some bankruptcy issues and finally filed for it and said they were going to liquidate and sell everything in uh, the United States. That may not be the case. After a bunch of stores have already been liquidated and closed, uh, they apparently are looking at reviving the brand internationally and let me, let me take the wording here for you. Uh, attempting to revive Toys R Us brand through new branding, through a new branding company that expands the global license agreements they already have, while still being able to invest in new retail locations. Uh, so essentially, they're looking to be able to still maintain the stuff they have overseas, in Canada, all over the place, but still bring things back to the United States, potentially. So uh, there's a whole lot not really given to us in these articles, but there's just enough to get us interested. Now, this is, as I once deemed it, the story that never ends, and fittingly, it is not yet over. We're never going to stop talking about Toys R Us. Never. Childhood. All right. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, though, I, I am glad that we have Toys R Us potentially coming back because as I just yelled childhood, it, it is a childhood nostalgia factory in terms of being able to go and pick up toys. And we do have things like the Sonic lines, the Alien Menace line, and things like that that are Toys R Us exclusives. So being able to still get our hands on those in the US will definitely be nice. Something I am curious about that we didn't get much information on is whether or not they're going to be revamping online sales or changing things like that because that is one of the things they cited as an issue that they weren't able to kind of catch up or keep up with places like Amazon, Walmart, etc., etc., the bigger name uh, online retailers. So that's something to keep a lookout for as well in terms of information from them. I'm sure this is not the end and we will be talking about it again in the future. So when we do, I'll be sure to bring you the news that drops on it. Let's go ahead and move on to the new blasters. First up, the Zombie Strike Nailbiter. This is a very cool looking blaster. This is something that just dropped uh, on a Facebook post in Nerf Modders. Welcome. It was on the back of a box in the artwork and I feel like I vaguely recall someone mentioning it would be neat to see some of the art stuff on the background become blasters and here it is. It, it looks to be essentially a uh, void caster from the Alien Menace line but reworked into a zombie strike shell and instead of just having a single turret that you load a few darts into, it is a clip-fed blaster. Now, clip, not magazine. So think like the Battle Scout, that style clip it looks like. What I don't know about this yet is whether or not that clip is removable or if it's going to slide up, you have to reload it and then knock it back down rather than being able to have multiples and just drop them in. Uh, this is going to have that big hand trigger, it looks like, so you just squeeze, it primes and shoots, similar to the Voidcaster or uh, uh, the Snapfire 8, I believe, uh, something like that. So there's a few other blasters that have uh, used a mechanism like this, but it's not a very prevalent one. So it's definitely kind of cool to see, and I'm sure we'll see people dual wielding uh, these... <laughs> these nail biter blasters and it should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I thought the void caster was cool. This is also cool. Hopefully the performance is a little bit better than the void caster, but we'll see. 
Regardless, I don't know when this is going to be out yet or the price or anything like that. We just had that uh, leaked image that was posted on Facebook, as I mentioned. So go check that out. Uh, the thread has some more people speculating, a little bit of information on the person who found it, things like that. But there's one other thing to talk about in terms of blasters today, and that is the Overwatch McCree blaster. We don't have an image, but what we do have is a price. And that price is going to be $45 for a McCree blaster. And uh, we do have the other two blaster prices as well. The Diva is going to be $35 and the Reaper blaster is going to be $50. So of course, these are a bit more expensive as we know because they are licensed blasters. They're Overwatch uh, licensed. Anytime you get that involved, it's going to raise that price up. We've seen it with Star Wars, seen it in plenty of other things. It's just the way it goes, unfortunately you pay a premium for that extra little bit. We don't know, again, what this looks like, how it's gonna function. People are hoping it's gonna be a revolver style because that would be really cool to have a rival hammer shot, essentially. Uh, fingers crossed that's the case. I'm sure people would be more than happy to toss uh, their, their $45 for a rival hammer shot that looks cool like McCree's blaster. So, these are supposed to come out in January, according to the ToyWiz links. Now, those links have actually all been 404'd, which means they weren't supposed to be up yet. So that was something that happened on accident. It's cool that someone found them and posted them. Thank you to Nerf Charmap. I hope I said that right. Uh, but still, good information to have, and we're getting these a little bit sooner than I anticipated, honestly. I was expecting a little bit later in the year next year, but hey, I am all good for January of next year. Maybe even we'll see them a little bit early for Christmas, as we tend to do see things early from Hasbro on accident uh, fairly often. So definitely, definitely interested and curious and looking forward to seeing the design and how it perform. I have to hazard a guess that we will see this blaster officially announced at BlizzCon this year. That's my guess. We'll see what happens next month. Uh, but that's, that's, that's my guess. We'll see. Regardless, let me know what you think the uh, McCree blaster is going to be and how it's going to function in terms of both aesthetics and performance and all of that. Uh, curious to hear your thoughts and your opinions on it as well. So in terms of other official Hasbro things. We talked about last week the Long Strike Modulus version and the image that some people thought maybe still could be uh, photoshopped or not legit. Well, Hasbro put an end to all of that. They released a video on their official Nerf YouTube page and the Modulus Long Strike is very real. And it's very nice. And it very much has updated internals to match elite performance. We don't know exactly what those elite internals are yet, but it's it's an improvement. It's something. We know that this blaster is going to perform up to elite standards, which fingers crossed means an updated plunger system and all of that, that we can mod heavily and we'll be able to take heavier spring loads, better performance, and get up to that super stock or ultra stock performance because this is a well-loved shell and I'm very excited to see what people are doing with it outside of the HPA builds that we see commonly done or the XBZ builds that we see done uh, for the long strike, which are awesome. Don't get me wrong, I think they're really cool. Uh, I just would like to see Springer users be able to have some fun with this platform, uh, finally. I think that would be awesome. So, I, I, fingers crossed, I, I'm a little bit more excited than I was last week about it because, well, we know now. We know. So that's just something I wanted to give you a little bit of update on. Uh, one more thing community-wise to talk about, and that is aftermarket boom code darts. This was posted up by Boomtendo on the Nerf Reddit and Facebook, among other places. Uh, he has been in contact with a manufacturer that is willing to do a run of boom code darts. Now he's actually redesigned the darts slightly, so the, the head is a different shape, I believe, uh, I can't remember if it's tapered or just smaller so that it should fit 
in brass and it should be able to work through brass properly which is fantastic because the drag of the head was one of the major problems with the dart this also means that the dart will be better used in magazines uh, which is one of my big problems with the boom code platform two of my big problems actually is that you couldn't barrel it couldn't put it in a magazine uh, if those two problems are solved that could be fun to try. I'd, I, it'd be very, very interesting to try. Now, the thing, the hurdle they have to cross here for this is that they need to do a Kickstarter to raise funds. They need about $11,000 to get the tooling and everything done for the first run. Subsequent runs will be cheaper, but they are looking to try to raise uh, a Kickstarter of some kind to try and get, I believe, 100 a uh, hundred backers of a thousand darts at a hundred and ten dollars per uh, thousand dart pledge if that made sense now this is one of my sticking points for this kickstarter process is that there's only going so far from the initial announcement there's only going to be that one tier available in terms of uh, minimum quantity hundred and ten dollars is not cheap for a thousand darts uh, now you you can look at this as it's an investment towards the future where then you can get those darts for cheaper once they have all the molds and everything to be able to produce these but it's still it's something you have to consider now if there was a fifty dollar or fifty five dollar for five hundred tier that may entice more people because it's not three digits once you cross that hundred dollar line things it becomes a bit heftier feeling. So uh, fingers crossed they'll flesh things out a little bit more in terms of uh, pricing tiers and structures and things like that. Maybe uh, they can they can find a good balance somewhere in there. Um, I don't think I will be able to afford the 110, but I've seen plenty of people already express interest. And that's awesome because if they are able to get these produced and it could bring a bit of a revival to Boomco in the hobby scene, that could be really nice. So fingers crossed for that. I think it's great they're trying to do it. And uh, when the Kickstarter does go live, I will let you know so you can take a look at that. I'll have a link down to the posts on it, of course, already. But again, I'll let you know about the Kickstarter when it does hit. Now, Mod of the Week. I reached out for Mod of the Week, one I was really excited about, and I did not get a response. So I'm bummed about that, and I'm sorry I'm not able to share it with you, but it... Uh, if nothing else super crazy pops up next week and I get a late response, maybe I'll share it with you next week. So let, let's go ahead and move on to video of the week, though. This week it comes to us from Monkey Tron Collective, and this is two Nerf Wars, two countries, one day. So Monkey Tron Collective went to a game at not only an airsoft field in an outdoor location that was really awesome to see, but they also went to one of the uh, FTT events, the FTT Battle Royale event in the shopping mall with a Fortnite theme in terms of the Battle Royale with loot drops and stuff like that. And they filmed uh, a little bit more of the airsoft field game, but also some of the, uh, the Battle Royale event as well. And it was really cool to see multiple types of events on the same day uh, traveled from one country to the next which is it's just a really neat thing so i thought it was a really enjoyable video and entertaining to see two different styles of game types played uh on the same day and just i love that the, the way that the hobby is spreading in terms of the number of games there are the fact that you go to two awesome games in the same day that's really cool that's really awesome, plain and simple, I love it. So uh, definitely go check that video out, let them know I sent you, send them some love because I do enjoy what Monkeytron Collective does and I hope you will enjoy that, enjoy that as well. Now, I just wanna say thank you to all of the people that view this video and uh, support the channel through uh, watching, subscribing, liking, sharing, supporting on Patreon, all of that. Thank you so much. And if there's anything you think I should be talking about, let me know down in the comments. As always, love reading every single one of them and responding to as many as I can. Uh, with that said, if you're new to the channel and you enjoyed this video, feel free to subscribe for more in the future. I'd love to have you be part of this community. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'm Jangular, and I'll see you next time.